between the Age of Enlightenment and the Age of Industry. The magnificent land of Albion changed for the better. While the land had moved along surviving the various entities and sinister plots that had attempted to destroy everything it had stood for, there was always someone to fight against it to allow the residents of Albion to continue thriving in the grand country. Within this large population, there were new people born every day that would grow up to change the world for the better. Within the capital city of Bowerstone, one man changed the way that the majority of Albion ran and continued in his endeavours to create a place where he could both continue to work on his technologies and plan for an even greater future. While this man is unknown to many, his inventions are. Among this man's multitude of inventions, he had created an island full of magnificent contraptions where the people of Albion could see what the future had in store for them. What was this place? Why was it created? And how valuable is it to the future of Albion? Here we explore, in the lore behind, Clockwork Island. Entering the age of industry, Bowerstone entered an age where the brightest minds of their generation would use their natural skills to invent contraptions to make the running of the country even more efficient. One of these men was Professor Ernest Faraday. With the regions within Albion a vast distance apart from each other, Ernest invented a transportation method that would allow a multitude of passengers to travel at once, almost completely in safety, away from the standard dangers that came with travelling along the roads where bandits and gruesome creatures waited within the forest for victims. This creation became known as the Mist Peak Monorail, and this was just one of many adjustments and upgrades that Ernest would add to Albion. With his name becoming known more across the land, Ernest created Faraday Industries, where his contraptions and motors would be used mostly within the industrial district of Bowstone to allow the easy functioning of the busy work life and strict deadlines that this region would become known for, as well as the use of child labour to keep the country functioning efficiently. While this region had once been known as Bowstone Slums, Ernest's amazing inventions had transformed it into a place of productivity and, in his mind, happiness. As a very rich man, and with his inventions and name becoming known across the whole of Albion, Ernest decided he would create something completely different in a place he would call his own. A place he would call Clockwork Island. Moving on to an island where many believed to have been close to the legendary island of Witchwood, Ernest had a vision of what Albion would look like in 15 years, and with time alone, he got to work to create clockwork creatures that would aid him in his endeavours. He planned to create the Clockwork Colin to act as humans in this scenario, Clockwork Dogs to interact with the Collins, and Clockwork Beetles to act in a maintenance capacity to clean and repair issues that would arise within the region. With these Clockwork contraptions ready after research and hard work to get them up and running, Ernest moved on to creating the official Clockwork Island, a sort of amusement park where the people of Albion and surrounding nations could visit all of Ernest's greatest inventions. Across Albion, his name was known to the mass population where a reputation followed his name, Faraday Industries, where faraway dreams become reality. It is said that the visitors of the island would wait for hours in queues just to see the inventions that Ernest had come up with. When allowed entrance to the park, the visitors were guided by one of Ernest's creations, a Colin Mark II named Huxley. Here, the robot would welcome them to the park and give them a tour of the island. Entering the park, the patrons would firstly be greeted by a stunning street that represented what Ernest envisioned to be a standard Bowerstone suburb merely 15 years in the future. Within, each home had a Colin acting as one of the residents of the future. Within Huxley's scripted lines, it was said he referred to these robots as having a superior well-being in comparison to those visiting, possibly suggesting Ernest's dislike towards the times they lived in currently. The robots would continue to explain how harmonic this place was, and that it would be the perfect place to raise a family in the future. As the visitors were able to wander the streets as the robots waved at them, the visitors of the park were given the opportunity to sign guest books, making note of their thoughts on the visit. During the opening of the park, many notable members of Albion had visited the park, one of which being the infamous entity known across Albion as Chesty. 
Here, Chesty had somehow managed to enter the park searching for more souls to acquire, where they wrote, Do robots have souls? I'd like some souls. Make me some souls and I'll be your super best friend forever and ever and ever. As the clockwork robots waved at the human visitors, they were amazed by the interaction of the clockwork dogs that roamed the streets giving affection to those around. Truly a wondrous place. While the robots would appear to be simply acting as props in a unique attraction for those that visited the island, Ernest made sure to make them as useful as possible by having them calculate his scientific problems when looking idle. In Ernest's world of tomorrow, he planned for it to be a world where there would be no conflict no jealousy and no selfishness, where science would be essentially the saviour of humanity. Moving past the initial street, Ernest commissioned a statue of himself created out of 24 carat zirconium, where Arthur Mint, an official sculptor in Bloodstone, had taken on the challenge to perfect Ernest's vision. The statue itself had a plaque that described Ernest as the father of modern age, hero of industry, and loving parent to all things clockwork. Looking at the exhibits surrounding the central statue and stunning dome, the visitors could observe various messages of encouragement to treat their neighbours better, use manners, and to limit the consumption of unneeded materials. Alongside this, many of the visitors even mentioned that they had overheard some of the robots commenting on how the sky seemed to have been floating away and that some would need a sky net to catch it. Coming towards the end of the tour, the visitors were thanked by Huxley after he had guided them through the marvellous world and then taken to a gate where the tour ended. While the region of the tour appeared to be small, the exhibit and construction here truly amazed those that visited. While the World of the Future attraction was just one available to the public, it appears Ernest had planned for additional attractions to be added for the island where plenty of space was available to begin construction. With many streets having been constructed behind the scenes in a Bowstone-esque fashion, it appears as though Ernest had planned to create his own version of a more peaceful city. Within these streets, Ernest had created factories where he could work on new clockwork creatures, technological advancements, and plans for the future. Ernest had found his place in the world, a place where he loved each and every one of his clockwork creatures, and a place where he felt safe from the tumultuous land of Albion across the sea. After a month of the park being open to the public, Ernest became overwhelmed by the extraordinary success. The public adored his creations and his vision for the Bowerstone of the future. While the park had taken up a large chunk of his time off the island, he still had work to do on his other creations, one of which to improve upon the safety of his monorail, and so, Ernest was in high demand and extremely happy with his success and potential bright future, but his happiness would not last for long. On an expedition to visit the distant region of Aurora, King Logan and his army were attacked by the Crawler, a creature of pure darkness after discovering an ancient cave. To his luck, King Logan was saved and aided by the ruler of the Aurorans, Kaelin where he left the country agreeing to help her and her people when he returned from the constant attacks of the crawler and its children. Upon returning to Albion, a blind seer appeared to Logan where she informed him that the crawler and the darkness would conquer Aurora and then conquer Albion. All he needed to do as king was create an army to fight against it when it would arrive in five years. Exploring his options, Logan was aware of the contraptions Ernest had made and believed that he would be the perfect person to give Albion the defence it needed against the evil on the way. Although Logan had abandoned Aurora in their time of need, Logan had deemed it necessary to save Albion. With this, King Logan sent word to Ernest that he would be visiting the island to speak to him in person. Unaware of why the king was actually visiting, Ernest became ecstatic, believing Logan to be visiting the island to congratulate him on his inventions and his contributions to make Albion a more productive place. With the king on the way, Ernest created a special welcome for the king so that Huxley could greet him in the correct manner when he arrived on Clockwork Island. During their meeting, Ernest was distraught to discover that Logan had in fact found interest in his clockwork creations, just not the interest he had hoped. Logan asked Ernest as king to adapt his clockwork contraptions so that they could fight to build an army. Although King Logan insisted that the army was required to defend Albion, 
Ernest was unsure about the whole situation. He had initially created these clockworks to use them to create an Albion free from conflict, jealousy and selfishness and the king was asking him to go against his values for the future. While against the idea and still unconvinced about King Logan's motives, Ernest agreed and began making changes to his beloved creatures where they would then have the ability to fight and defend themselves. After some time to adapt his clockwork creations into powerful beings capable of inflicting damage on those around them, Logan returned to the island and deemed that Ernest hand over all of his creations capable of battle. Angry with the requests to give up the clockworks he saw as his children, Ernest denied the request. Since Ernest's first meeting with Logan, he had heard word that the king had become mad with power, treating those that opposed him extremely harshly, where he had been named by some as a power-hungry king. Thinking of the fate of the future of Albion, Logan threatened Ernest with everything in his power. He told Ernest that he would take away his power over Faraday Industries, confiscate his clockworks, and lock him up forever. In Logan's mind, if Ernest refused to help and the darkness did indeed strike without an army, Ernest would have no industry or clockworks to care for anyway. Standing his ground, Ernest refused to agree to Logan's terms and refused him access to unlocking the secrets of his clockworks. To this, Logan had Ernest locked away within Ravenscar Keep and his clockwork island closed to the public. With Faraday Industries still a major part of the running of Albion, King Logan offered the whole of the company to one of his ruthless advisors, Reva. And from here, Reva changed the name from Faraday Industries to Reva Industries, where he would push forward with the industrial needs of Albion, no matter what the cost. With Ernest now trapped in a cell, his intellectual properties taken away from him, and his name struck from all official records, all Ernest Faraday could do was sit in his jail cell and wait for his revenge. For years, Ernest waited in Ravenscar Keep where he was surrounded by other members of Albion that had disagreed with Logan's ruling of the country. On the mainland, a revolution occurred resulting in Logan being forced from the throne and their younger sibling taking the mantle of the new ruler of Albion. As a hero, the new ruler defended Albion to the best of their ability, successfully defeating the crawler. Now, Albion could rebuild and grow even stronger. Although still a part of Albion, the prisoners of Ravenscar Keep were told nothing of the event that had unfolded, but Ravenscar would soon have its own problems. After a riot at Ravenscar Keep, many of the residents were able to escape before the commander came back, one of these being Ernest. After managing to leave the island he had been trapped on for many years, Ernest returned back to a now run-down, disheveled clockwork island. Believing he would never see his island again, Ernest was happy to see his clockwork creations still standing where they had been since his arrest. Aware that someone would come looking for him after discovering his escape, Ernest now prepared his defence. The Kingdom of Albion had taken away everything he had cared about once and they would not do it again. Believing Logan to still be sitting on the throne, Ernest worked on his creations to defend himself and the island in the event that they would attempt to take him from his creations again. While his creations would be a great defence for the island, he also took it upon himself to electrify certain areas to reduce access to any invaders. With these defences set up, he created one more thing. With his natural ability to create magnificent items, Ernest created a suit that would allow him to fight against anyone that came into contact with him. In the short time he had, he created a suit that allowed him to fly, pound the ground with force, and most importantly, retain a large amount of damage. While he was proud of all of his creations so far, he regarded this as his greatest invention and saw it as the future of fighting. With everything set up, he waited. After a failed assassination attempt on the hero ruler of Albion, they came to Ravenscar Keep to uncover the mystery behind the person responsible. After arriving at the island, the hero was informed that dangerous villains had escaped the island and that it would be best to recapture them. And with this, they were informed about Ernest Faraday and Clockwork Island. Only when they were told about Ernest, they were not told the true details on why he had been detained. Arriving at Clockwork Island, the ruler was greeted by Huxley and was given the magnificent tour of Clockwork Island. Watching from afar, 
Faraday activated his robots to change from their passive mode to murderous mode, and here, the Battle of Clockwork Island began. As the hero fought through the areas of Clockwork Island, they were attacked by the Mark II Collins, which themselves had the ability to create mass damage by pounding the ground, spinning their sharp blades at the hero, and it was even observed that they could tap into will energy and perform the Assassin Rush ability seen 500 years before by the heroes of the Heroes Guild. While these were dangerous enough, Ernest had programmed the clockwork dogs to explode upon contact with any unwelcome visitors and the maintenance beetles to attack as a group, striking as many times as they could. Working through the island, the hero destroyed the creations that Ernest had loved so dearly, and finally, the hero met with Ernest, who was ready to fight until the very end in his clockwork suit. Through a brutal fight, Ernest fought resiliently against the hero, but his attempts were in vain as the hero was able to defeat not only Faraday, but the clockwork creatures that had come to aid him in battle. Now defeated, the hero was given the option on what to do with a now defenseless and broken Professor Ernest Faraday. In one reality, the hero decided that Faraday had caused too much trouble for Albion and could not be redeemed, and with this, they struck Ernest where he died, along with his children. In another reality, the hero took pity on Ernest and decided that he deserved to live. With this, Ernest is sent back to Ravenscar Keep to recover from his injuries. It is even said that he was released from the prison after a full recovery. With the island now having been brought to the attention of the ruler of Albion, and with no great threat to torment the kingdom, the ruler took it upon themselves to return to Clockwork Island after solving the mystery of the riot of the prison. Arriving at the island, the ruler is asked by Huxley to construct a companion to end his loneliness mode. Ready for a new challenge, the ruler searches the island and discovers the various parts needed to construct a companion for Huxley. With everything ready, the hero successfully creates a call-in and gives Huxley the companion he needed. But, due to a programming error, the new robot is created with old programming. With this, Huxley becomes unhappy once again and refers to the new Colin as an idiot. Disappointed, Huxley decides to leave the island with his new robot, searching for a way to kill both himself and the idiot. As his attempts to curb his loneliness had failed, he would rather end both his life and idiot's life to spare a cursed existence of awareness. Although the island had lost Huxley, the residents of Albion began to hear of this magnificent place, and over the days, many took a trip to Clockwork Island. As the houses here were constructed to be sustainable, and the island itself constructed to be a perfect place to live in the future, the Kingdom of Albion deemed Clockwork Island as a new place to live. With this, the homes here became available for sale to the general public, and soon, the streets filled with its new residents. The land of Albion is full of magical locations, magnificent contraptions, and grand adventures to be had. A location as incredible as Clockwork Island could only be created by someone as talented and creative like Professor Ernest Faraday. While Faraday has had a tough life simply down to saying no to a king worried for his kingdom's safety, Faraday's legacy ultimately has impacted Albion for the better in the long run, where the population can now see a bright future for Albion in a new Clockwork Age. I ask Hero, if you were put into a position of giving up your prized possession to a mad ruler knowing it would help your world in the long run, would you? This was the lore behind Clockwork Island in Fable. I had so much fun putting this one together. I learned so much about Faraday and the creation of Clockwork Island during the research section of this, and it is kind of heartbreaking when you think about the trouble that Ernest went through simply because he did not want to corrupt the clockwork contraptions he regarded as children. In my opinion, Ernest was just another victim of Logan. He did not deserve to be detained for refusing to build an army. I do feel bad too, because in my memory, I have killed Faraday every time I have played the game. If you enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts. If you really liked it, then go ahead and subscribe. I know you have already watched a few videos by now, so why not subscribe and be notified when new episodes come out. If you would like to stay up to date with everything I get up to outside of YouTube, then go and follow my Twitter and Instagram. 
I also stream on both YouTube and Twitch every Friday, where we are currently playing through Fallout New Vegas and Alien Isolation. The link is in the description if you are interested. Finally, I would like to thank my patrons who are helping to support the channel. I really appreciate you. Thanks to the old gods, RVWV, Arco, Austin Moody, Brunette Janaz, and Jojo Scotia. And an extra special thank you to the Alduins tier, Scrushroom, Jonas, Lewis, and Queen Arby. Thank you so much, guys. What did you think of this lore video? Did you feel sorry for Ernest during your playthrough? Did you like Clockwork Island as a location within the game? And would you have lived there if you were given the option? In my opinion, I would happily live there and maybe even attempt to extend it to more than a Clockwork Street. I guess living around robots would be fun, but as we have seen in other media, you should never give a robot too much responsibility. Anyway, I think that was everything I wanted to cover in this episode. Now, hero, enjoy your day. Bye.